factory would have three of these in sequence and they're nested in a, in a big uh, brick framework with hollows underneath it for fire and you put the sap in one boil it down transfer it to the next one boil it down some more transfer it to the third one boil it down some more by the time you got to the third one it was very viscous stuff and when it got really just kind of almost runny solid they would put in what was called a hogshead uh, which is a great big barrel and they would not tap the barrel tight, average size one, but they can come bigger uh, than this. So you see these around the garden, but that's what they are. This is the bread oven of a sugar plantation. Our, our, our red hot poker vine is not blooming right now. It blooms almost all year. It's absolutely fabulous, but you just have to trust me for that. But uh, eventually it'll be back in the kitchen. This is the old ritual for the plantation. Watch your step in here. Though. The floor is, is original but irregular. <laughs> okay. So welcome to the kitchen. And you can imagine this would have been going great guns every day, all day. Uh, now, obviously in those days the kitchen would have had a roof on it. But the reason you have a freestanding kitchen, so what you have in here are primarily culinary herbs that we used for cooking, uh, either then or now. Uh, a lot of these things are going to be familiar to you. Uh, of course, they, you know, things like basil and oregano and those sort of things grow year-round here, so we have them mm -hmm. constantly. And ordinarily, of course, we have green leaves, but this is an ornamental variety. So this particular sugar cane is just grown because it's pretty. You could harvest sugar out of it, but the thing to remember about sugar harvesting, which is what made it, is it's that symbol of hospitality for visitors. And the pineapple is the same today as it was then, and things we have the Brazilians, the ancient Brazilians, to thank for it thousands of years earlier. But I love it when they're seedlings and they've decided to be ornery and bloom, bloom more in the springtime. The mother Fireworks plant is bush. over here and she dutifully blooms in the winter. So go figure, I don't know. <laughs> so anyway, this plant's native to Thailand and a Clearodendrum quadriculari, which I think is lovely. The shaped heads. Mm -hmm. It's and a they're monkey pod tree. Yeah. For such a big tree. Mm -hmm. uh, they were brought in uh, from Venezuela as cattle shades because once the sugar market went monkey pod for tree. These sugar plantations, they went to cattle. And so they needed shade. And they'd already brought these in for some shades. Oh, I'll bet. Snow Queen Super Hibiscus. happy. And it has the wonderful variegated leaves, hence the name of Snow Queen. But it has the lovely red flowers on it every day. And they do very well here. We had a plague, and as we always say, Snow say, Queen uh, Hibiscus. If they, have it, if they have the disease of the insect in Florida, we're going to get it next. Because inevitably it's going to end up with, coming in with somebody. And here, not too many years ago, we had a pink mealy bug that got on the island, just decimated all our hibiscus. But we're coming back now from that. They're still here, and we, but we have to monitor them, but they are not as at plague levels as they were when they first took over. Uh, so happily, some of our hibiscus are looking pretty good again. And this poor little friend. Isn't it great? This is a is bay it, rum One of the tree. ingredients in Old Spice Men's Club. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we sometimes call it the Old Spice tree. Because <laughs> it's used in the Old Spice Club. Some people think it's in that That's right. Yeah. They do. What? This is the Old Spice tree or bay rum tree. No. <laughs> <laughs> Killed my grandmother. See, don't, don't do that. Exactly. Yeah. But it is that some people really mm -hmm. like it. Then. Mm -hmm. But anyway, so we had a lovely group of volunteers. Came. It's native to East Africa and it has relatives in Madagascar. Uh, but anyway, the impala lily is a fabulous plant for us and, and it, it's as close as we come to an azalea or rhododendron as far as the look of the plant. It's obviously not all related to those things. And it, it gets very fat, like a little miniature baobab tree. But the tree, this thing was not blooming at all. You see me a lot of catalogs in a lot of garden centers, lots of different colored flowers. Some are all red, some are white, some have the little lip like this one, which I think is particularly attractive. Some have fat leaves, some have skin. Um, the and it really speaks Lille. to its, its East African origins. Okay. Desert Impala roots could be from Lille. anywhere. <laughs> but, but I just think they're lovely plants.
Indian almond. And this is the mother tree. Did you see? Its branches okay. were all the way This out. is the Pod tree. All the way out over the other garden. Just massive This is canopy. the Pod tree. Now, the other funny thing that you're going to see happening since the hurricane. This is an East Indian almond of tree. Papaya. See all those little maple leaf yes. plants back in the back there? Mm -hmm. Those are all papayas, East and every one of them has sprouted since September. Yeah. Um, and I mean, so eventually, papaya festival. What do you think? And this is a monkey pie tree. tree. <laughs> you, can't, you can't turn the corner, you'll see them all up like here. I want to talk about this tree because I like to say the name. You go ahead. Screw pine. <laughs> <laughs> the screw pine, there you go. Now, I'm not really quite sure why they call it that. But it's Madagascar. It's this is a common. screw pine. Most of them have these wonderful stilt roots, and I am a nut for stilt roots. It's got stilt roots, I am there. And so I am very happy with this plant, and I want to get more different kinds of screw pines and plant them around because it's a wonderful root. And uh, I just think that that's terrific looking. Just the seeds ourselves. This is a sausage Because tree. it has to pass through the gut of a rhino or an elephant first before they sprout. So you send it to the zoo and... <laughs> no, we rip them open and pick out the darn seeds and clean them. you got to clean, 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 clean. Then you can get them to grow. But otherwise, yes, give it to your neighborhood elephant or rhino and you will have lots of sausage trees coming up in the dome afterwards. But... That's from the sausage tree. In the new world, we have the This is a, now here's the thing that lady of the night. for your friends. If a flower is white and it's fragrant after dark and it's pleasant, it's moth pollinated. If it opens up every stalk and the hummingbirds have to come back each day and search for the new flower. But this is uh, Acmea dichlamydia variety trinitensis. So trinitensis, when you see ensis, it's a, like a place name. So whatever came before the ensis is where it's from. Trinitensis, Trinidad. And so that way you can amaze your friends up at the end, then we'll have to make a decision at that point. So let's walk into this garden in here. This is the pineapple garden. And there are a few oddities in here, but then I want to take you through the bromeliad garden. This is the one I was telling you about. This is smooth cayenne. The smooth cayenne pineapple is smooth on the edges. Yeah, well, except for the very top. <laughs> but, so don't do that bit. But if you go this way, you'll see it's very smooth. This is more, probably the more typical store pineapple. And this one is a secondary plant. And this is the ancestral pineapple. So this is the wild one from Brazil. And you can see that pineapple is almost ripe. It won't get much bigger than that. Wow. And it will be full of seeds oh my. and fiber. So to get from this to that took several thousand years of selecting in Brazil. So I like the dwarf pineapples. I think they're rather interesting plants. And they're also, of course, the bromeliads that you just saw over on the tree are pineapple relatives. But I think you'd be surprised about some of the pineapple relatives. Unfortunately, really, really lovely. But anyway, yeah. so we're going to have a lot of pineapples here at some point. So let's walk over into the other part of the bromeliad garden and you'll see some more of the relatives. Walk into the this bromeliad garden. garden. And what I should have said when we were on the other side is that you are now inside the old sugar factory. We are at the southern end of it. So this would have been one big building full of different rooms. What was done in each of the rooms, I do not know. Uh, obviously, this particular set of two rooms, you can see there was a wall here, so a room here and a room here. This particular garden, two days ago, and you never know. Orchids bloom at any time of the year, so it's hard to tell what any one of these particular flowers believe that. But what's harder to understand is that Spanish moss is in the pineapple family. So this is a bromeliad just like these. Spanish moss. And the Spanish moss only comes in one species, native from the southern United States mm -hmm. to Argentina, and it's native to this island as well. However, if you took the southern South Carolina, you know, New Orleans version and brought it here, it would die. If we took our version and took it there, it would die because they're adapted to where they are. Now, if I took one from the Amazon and brought it here, it'd probably be the end of them. <laughs> but at any rate, 
The, what you should see here is these are actually a string of individual plants. So that is a plant, a three leaf little thing. And so it's literally chains of individual plants. And these are the truest air plants. There are other plants that are bigger and beefier that are, and they simply absorb the nutrients from rainwater. As the rainwater coats the plant, little scales that make it silvery open up inside. So that's why it'll turn green when it's wet. So you walk, oh, there's an orchid blooming today. You never know, you just have to always look. <laughs> Every day is a different day when it comes to orchid. Oh, here's another one. In fact, there's two more. Up on oh, top yeah, of the wall, pretty. you can see the darker one and the white one. Oh, and here's the lavender one. Or magenta, I guess I would show really say. I don't know if I see any other ones floating around, but that's pretty many. Now, one interesting thing is, now if you look at a flower like this, you, well, who do you think the pollinator is going to be with these colors? These. Sometimes. And what I wanted to show you was this particular one. Before the storms, this plant had never bloomed for us. It was in too much shade. But when the storms opened up the canopy, these bloomed for the first time. So this is the first time we've gotten to see the color on this, which is just absolutely unearthly. Fabulous. Isn't it fabulous? The bromeliads have a lot of them, but anyway, this is vanilla, the, and that's the Mexican vanilla that you harvest the native vanilla from. Here on this island, as most places in the world, you'd have to hand pollinate. Oh, that's still the smell like. <laughs> I mean, I think most things, I think most things like tomatoes are that way, right? I mean, because they first brought them to Italy from South America, people knew they were in the deadly nightshade family. And these are colorful plants in the pineapple family. These are ornamental plants. Bromeliads. You know, some kid grabbed the first cherry tomato and popped it in their mouth and they and lived to tell, lived about to tell the tale. Yeah, Somebody said, huh, well, apparently it's not deadly. I wonder if you cook with it. The next thing you know, we've got fossil sauce. But, you know, <laughs> you have to wonder. But I think, I think it's either kids figuring this stuff out or men in a bed. <laughs> you know, most of the year. Uh, you're, you're in luck now because we're starting to get more and more flowers on the island. Ordinarily, our least flowery time is at the end of fall, and Alamanda. as winter comes on, you get start getting more flowers, and then as spring comes on, which is where we are now, Alamanda. lots more flowers. So we're we, and mm -hmm. how about, Phil how the about philodendrons as house plants? So mm -hmm. some people, okay. Well, this plant goes by the same deal. If most people refer to it by its botanical name, most people say Ixora. But the, if you wanted a common name for this plant, the only common name I know of is Flame of the Jungle. It's native to Indonesia, but Exoras are very commonly planted on this island and they do very well. And you get the hummingbird stuff. <laughs> hummingbird. Yeah. Now there are some flower flowering bananas that live, weirdly enough, in the Solomon Islands, a little group of outliers. And their flowers are green <coughs> and they're bat pollinated. Because again, hummingbirds are native only to the Americas together and so you got it we are the land of two of red tube flowers because of all the hummingbirds they haven't opened their little tubes now the firecracker plant you see growing out of the ruins here is from mexico again another hummingbird pollen this way circle around the back of the have different plants that are used for different things now, this is cocoa plum which is a lovely edible plant. It has a leaf like a little sea grape. Uh, they can't have much taste at all. But the thing that I think is really interesting here is this little friend right here. This plant, which is also this plant, is the lipstick plant. It was brought here by the Native American. This is the lipstick the same, tree. Just a different it grows local in name. It, it does. It looks, yeah. It's kind of a red, spiny looking seed heads when it's in, in, in uh, seed. And then it dries. But it's a, it's a lovely plant, but because it's from the Amazon basin originally, we keep it... This uh, is the castor bean plant this like Deborah noni. Green used. And uh, noni is also known as painkiller because the leaves are used in that way. You can this tie them around the bruise or arthritic joints, etc. But most people get an oil from the noni, noni tree and apply it. And we sell the noni oil in our shop, but we have quite a few noni trees on the grounds. Spread the tree around from Southeast Asia. Uh, we put this on every island, whether they were going to settle there or not. That's one of those interesting things. This is sea grape. I was mentioning sea grape when I showed you the big leaf sea grape. This is the normal beachside sea grape. People use it as preserves, and uh, it's a wonderful frontline dune. 
And because the way the leaves are, it's like one of those jet blast guards. It takes the sea wind and sends it upwards out of the plant. So behind it, lots of native... What happens is when the, fruit, when the fruit's ready, it'll look like a big orange pear with a very fat cashew nut stuck in the bottom. And, and that's because the cashew is a false fruit. It's actually a swollen fruit stem. The real fruit is actually the nut and its husk. Mm -hmm. But the husk is full of poison ivy juice, which is why you will never find a... That's a sour sauce. Desert it makes a wonderful Kezia. little weeping tree, blooms year round, and flushes after flush after flush. Just a divine thing. This is Lignum Vitae, the tree of life. It became endangered because it was mm. before metal gears and bearings. This very dense, self-lubricating wood was used in place of it. And it's a super slow growing tree. So to harvest it for wood size, you probably would cut down trees this big round that were probably a thousand years old. And it takes a long time for them to grow back. So this is uh, that plant. This plant at the end is a century, but it's our particular species that lives only on this particular island. Got this back. is the St. Croix century plant. It's a federally endangered species. Um, it grows very well. does well, obviously, in gardens. Not a problem. We've still and this is ripe. Right so yeah. this is not quite ripe. That's right. Yeah. And that's it. Part of the lipstick tray. Lipstick tray. Yep. That's it. And so glad I saw that because that way we now I've learned a new thing. Ro ro Roku, right? Yeah, Roku. Roku. Because it's a tree. It's a small tree, but it's a tree. And they would harvest it with hooks to pull it off the tree. Eventually, though, through crossbreeding of different cotton varieties, they came up with an annual cotton, which could go from seed to a cotton crop in the end, growing season outside of the tropics. But in the tropics, it's a weed. Cotton. Shrub. It's in the hibiscus family. Uh, blooms with the yellow flower in the morning that fades to pink by evening. And then produces the cotton, which I think is very showy. It's messy, but I think it's, yeah. very, I think it's very showy. But yeah, I also want to show you this. Anybody work with sisal twine or sisal rope? This is the sisal plant from whence they, that is harvested. And it's an agave for a century plant. The fibers are inside the leaf. reproduce the this mother plant. This is a sisal plant. Identical. But any from seed will obviously have variation. How long would that stay up? This will stay up for the better part. It's more of the sea and island it'll cotton. And make some baby plants up on it. And then they'll, they'll fall off. And, uh, but it occasionally will make a root shift. So, just walk down this way. And now, your friends, I want to talk so about the virgin evolution. This is a ficus tree that's being strangled. That tells you it's not a cactus. So you'll be able to immediately say to your friends, cactus, not cactus. Now this particular um, euphorbia is from the old world. Uh, this is euphorbia lactea, which is translates to the milky euphorbia. You break it, it's got a milky sap, which is poisonous. And if it gets in your eyes, it can cause blindness. So it's definitely not something you want to do. But this is also one that has a birth defect. The birth defect, this is what the plant should look like. One growing tip. I had to cut out all those big trunks you see. That was all reversions. So it's just like if you had a crab apple tree and you have to keep taking off the basal sucker. Mm -hmm. Same deal. So we want this. Now it looks cushy. It is not cushy. <laughs> it looks friendly. It's not. It's, it's a very pokey prickly plant, but it is not a cactus. So now you know the difference between <laughs> This is the old factory ruins. So I want you to notice that we have a water lily pond in here. The pea family. This is a was sandpaper good. vine. Sandpaper vine, and it's got a sandy, rough leaf to it, hence the name. But what's really wonderful about this plant is it has a colored calyx and a colored flower. The calyx is the, is the woodier part underneath the flower. That's this. This has already shed out the real flower. This is the real flower, this dark purple. And that emerges from the center of each one of these. 
but it doesn't last very long. But the fact that the calyx lasts a long time means this thing is showy for months and months. It's just a terrific vine, native to Miss Petria, Petria volubilis. Volubilis can be interpreted as either beautiful or twining. And mm. I would have to say it does both. It's beautiful and it's fine. And it can be a beast. And you can have a tulip tree. African tulip tree on this island is not an invasive species, but in Hawaii and Puerto Rico it is. Um, it is sometimes referred to by its African name, Baton de Saucier, the saucers or, or witch doctors, Baton or Juan, because the unopened flower bud can be used as a squirt gun. Look at the iguana, guys. Oh, do you have any iguana here today? But don't get used to it. Hi this, there. This entire water lily pond was installed by Hurricane Maria. Oh, you did it. Really? Absolutely without our help. There's a dam under this bridge that helps impound a little water here every now and then. This is here at the St. George Botanical Gardens. That's up. Generally in flows it, 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 only when a heavy rain happens, and almost never has more than a trickle going. Oh, there you go. Going for a swim. Look at that boy. He is big enough to eat. Yeah. I had one that got out of my house.